y'all can do better than that. Howdy! Howdy! Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Welcome to Rosie's place. I'm John Hurley, the bartender, and I've worked here ever since Rosie built this place more than 25 years ago. Wow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are bigger, fancier honky tonks in Texas, but Rosie's has a charm about it that sets it apart from all the rest. It's kind of a second home to a lot of folks. We uh, call them the regulars. And most of them drop by every night. Yeah. Over the years, we've watched lots of dramas unfold in this place. Looking in on the comings and goings of our regulars is like watching a real soap opera. But there's one particular store I do want to tell you. I guess you can call it Dan's Store. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not some earth-shaking tale. It's a simple one. Just your everyday love and broken heart kind of thing. Now, Dan, he's Rosie's son. The only real family she's got, and I guess I've kind of adopted him as my own after all I've known him since he was a baby. Well, Dan's story certainly began here at Rosie's, and I guess in a lot of ways it ended here too. So let's go back about, oh, two and a half years. The usual crowd was there. Rosie was doing her thing, mixing with the people, making folks be right at home. It was a typical Friday night, or so we thought. entertainment, depending on the regulars, waitresses, waiters, and yes, even Rosie herself to make the music. For example, there's Jenny and Dan. Now, they were real crowd pleasers. When they weren't up singing, they were waiting on tables. Now, Jenny had been working with Rosie's for almost a year, and a pretty serious romance had sprung up between her and Dan. There was even some talk about wedding bells down the road. As for our regulars, well, they can always be depended on to keep the place jumping. For instance, there's Joseph Clare, a real favorite. Joseph Clare! 
For 25 years I was married to the only man in my life. Though our love had grown cold many years ago, I still played the role of good wife. Trapped by my love for our children, I kept all my dreams. But now the children have grown up and gone, and I'm gonna take me a ride. Interstate Katie's gonna take this lady out California way. Gonna start a new life as nobody's wife in that city by. through their park and I ran across this bronze statue of a man. It had a simple inscription on the plaque at the base which read, Thank you, Phil. Well, I asked an old man sitting there about it. He told me a story that was so incredible, so inspiring, that I wrote me down this here song. And it's a true story.
Sunday morn when he eased one out toward the preacher's work. The preacher screamed, he's the devil's boss. The sheriff said, well, you better be gone. Flash and Phil. Well, that's when that outlaw motorcycle gang rode into town, about 50 of them. They were big and mean, riding a Harley machine. They wore black leather jackets and dirty blue jeans. I heard all the town folk get to the meeting hall. Yellow, let's kill all the men and the women will fall. The room became still. Then about 50 bad dudes closed in for the kill. Well, Phil, he just stood there, smiled, <laughs> lifted one leg. <laughs> and if you listened very carefully, you could hear. <coughs> <laughs> he did a little
bar that night was Jack Dillard, a professional talent scout for a major recording studio in Nashville. Now, he'd been listening to Jenny all evening, and after her last song, he called her over. He had an offer to make her. Now, Jack Dillard was the one that Rosie knew when she was in business. And he dropped in every few years to the interview with Jimmy Park looking for talent. Changes were about to happen in Rosie's place. Honey, you're not going to believe this. What? Well, let's just say that someday you may be telling people you knew me when. Okay, what are you talking about? I guess you noticed that guy I was talking to? Oh, yeah, after your son. Well, what about him? He offered me a job. Well, what kind of job? A singing job in Nashville. He says he really thinks I can make it big. I'd start off as a backup singer. Dan, he's with a record company. Here's his card. I asked him about you, but he said it's only me he can use. So at first I thought I didn't want to do it, but he was very persuasive. Dan, he really liked me. Now, I don't treasure the thought of leaving Texas and Rosie's and all, but Nashville's where it's at. Nothing's going to happen for us here. What do you think? Well, I think... Uh, well, I think we've got a good life here. Maybe it's not the big time, but it's real. We entertain people by doing what we enjoy. Make a decent living, and we've got each other. That's been enough for me, and I thought it was enough for you, too. It's been enough, Dan. But ever since I've been a little girl, I've always dreamed of being famous. A star, name and life, swimming pool. All that goes with it, as trite as it may sound. But life's been so good for me here, I haven't thought about anything else lately. But if I don't at least try for it, now that I've got the opportunity, I'll always wonder what could have happened. Even a few months, no more than a year at the most. Come with me, Dan, and let's at least try while we're still young. Jenny, I've never had your dreams. Mine are pretty much already what I already have or thought I could have with you. Well, I kind of pictured us getting married, having a couple of kids. No fame, no dazzling lights, just ordinary real life. For real life can be marriage, family, and career, can it? All I'm asking for is a chance to find out if I can make it. If I can't, at least I know that I try. You've got to try to make some of your dreams come true. <coughs> well, it sounds like you've already made up your mind, Jenny. You really don't need my advice. You mean you wouldn't even come with me? At least you can support my wanting to try. I've got to try, Dan. <coughs> Just give me a year or even less. But Jenny, I don't want to live there for even one year. I don't want to look around for odd jobs in Nashville. Well, if I decide to go, would you wait for me here? I don't know. Well, damn it. I don't want to put my life on hold, waiting to see whether you make it or not, and hoping that you fall flat on your face and come back to me like I'm some kind of consolation prize. So if I decide to go, is it over between us? Look, Jenny, I'm not giving you any ultimatums, but I'm also not making any promises. Well, I don't know what's going to happen between us, but if you start a whole new life for yourself, well, you you got to pay the price, and well, that's it. I'm free to do what I want. I love you, Dan. Then don't go, Jenny. How can you be so insensitive? Can't you see how exciting this could be for me? I don't mean to be insensitive, Jen. But you just can't have it all. You know I support anything you want to do. Well, you're a better man than I am. Don't be so flippant with me. This is very painful. Well, how the hell do you think I'm feeling about it?
Can I help? Rosie. I'm so confused. I got this offer from this Nashville guy. Jack Dillon. He told me he made you an offer, and I can see by Dan's face that he's not too happy about it. He seems to think it should be easy for me to turn it down. Honey, it's not what he thinks. It's what he wants. And that's for you not to go. He just doesn't want to lose you. I don't want to lose him either. But he should give us the chance to look into other options. Women are always following around after their men, at least giving them time to work on their careers. So what's wrong with it being the other way around? He's just so stubborn. He's not ready to consider anything except my flatly refusing this offer. Well, as much as you two love each other, you've got to want the same things in life, or else it just won't work. I'm so afraid, Rosie, that if I don't try, I'll always regret it, and maybe resent Dan for standing in my way. I look at you, and I see myself 30 years ago. I had the same ambitions you have, and I wanted it just as bad. And you know, I went after it. Oh, and there were some wonderful times. It was exciting. I had successes which thrilled me. But I also had the rough times, too. And finally, finally I realized it wasn't a lot for me. But unfortunately, kiddo, you can't learn by anyone else's experiences. But I love him, Rosie. I can't stand the thought of losing him. What should I do? You're asking the wrong person. I don't want to see you go, not only for me, but because it'll hurt Dan a lot. But how can I tell you not to do something that at one time I had to try for myself? And as for love, honey, mm, that's one subject I'm going to stay clear of. <laughs> I can teach you to play poker or to shoot around the pool. And how to set your VCR, though I never finished school. I can help you choose your wardrobe, pick your shoes or buy a hat. But with the bears of the heart, I'm not very smart, so I can't help you. for a couple months and then one day he and I had a little talk. Hey John, can I unload on you for a couple of minutes? Hell yes, I'm a bartender, ain't I? Unload away. <laughs> well, I guess you can tell I haven't been uh, doing too well since Jenny left. Oh really? I hadn't noticed. <laughs> well, well, I don't know what I should do. I knew this was going to be hard, but I didn't think I'd react like some lovesick teenager. I just can't stop thinking about her. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I was content with my life here before I met Jenny. Of course, things seemed perfect after she came. But it's now, but now it's like I don't even want to be here. Where do you want to be? In Nashville? In Nashville, no. With Jenny, yeah. I just want to run away, but I don't know where to go. Well, maybe I ought to give it some more time. You know that old saying about time healing all wounds? 
It's true, you know. Oh, I know I won't be mooning around forever. It's just that I want to fight it. Sometimes I think I should go to somewhere altogether different, a whole new environment. Different place, different people, different job. Well, maybe I'll do some traveling. Take to the open road. Change the scenery might do you some good. Hmm. Probably would. It's just that the only place that I feel I want to be right now is with Jenny. So I keep thinking that maybe I was wrong to be so quick to let her go. I mean, it's not like she had another guy. She just wanted a chance at a career, and she's a damn good singer. We both know that. Yeah, there's lots of talent there. Mm. I could have told her to go ahead and try, and that I'd join her there later and find work, or I could have stayed here. I mean, it's not like I got a profession here that I have to protect. Well, it's not too late to tell her now, if that's how you really feel. That's just it, Johnny. I know how I feel. I'm miserable without her. But I don't know what I want. I don't know. Maybe I should just... Maybe I should just swallow my pride and go see her. What do you think? You know my history with women. Why the hell would you ask me? But from his letters, which Rosie and I waited for, like a couple of kids waiting for an ice cream truck, we could see that the life he had found was working for him. Now, he did run out of money, but instead of coming home, he started working odd jobs. And then for the next year, we got letters from him from all over the country. He seemed content on his blue highways. <laughs> I walked away from Hartford in West Texas
life and its sorrow. Jenny in Nashville. That wonderful talent and ambition were just not to be denied. Now she had written us about a song she wrote and recorded, which was beginning to get some airplay. And it wasn't long after that that we started hearing it on the radio. But she was certainly still carrying a torch for Dan.
pretty good for non-union labor, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> you like that. I can beat my son, the ball headed right <laughs> Anyway, the letters we got from Dan were a regular occasion around here. What we usually did was we'd get out the atlas and everybody would gather around, we'd pinpoint where he was, what new job he was working at. And most of the time he'd stay in the town just a couple of weeks or so, just long enough to make enough money to get to the next place. But then for a long stretch of time, his letters were all coming from this cattle ranch in Oregon. Now, as it turns out, this ranch was owned and run by a young gal by the name of Rachel, a divorcee with a couple of kids, girls 11, 12 years old. He seemed to be hitting it off just beautifully with this family. His letters were all very positive and upbeat, and he seemed to like it there with no inclination to move on. As a matter of fact, Seems like he liked everything about the place. The work, the people. I wonder why he's never seen all this old stuff before. Mom probably didn't want us to know how tacky her mother was. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, Daddy, you must have that on. It's so you. But I couldn't possibly wear that. I haven't got the proper accessories to go with it. Now where does one find a hat? It was such a beautiful dress. Here, this matches perfectly. Oh yes, quite stunning. And these were made just for me. Now I must say, I'm ready for a night on the town. The only thing I'm missing is a party to Charleston with. No, dear, I think this is past the Charleston era. It's more like the jitterbug or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, have you guys seen two young ladies who lives here? Uh, one's tall with blonde hair and one's short with uh, brown hair. I think they're on a way. Yeah, I saw them hitchhiking. They said they were going to Neptune. Neptune? <laughs> Here, Dad, you must try that on. It's perfect for your complexion. Oh, who took you to see that? Who took you to see beautiful hair? Well, now that's ladylike, Kim. But it's the latest style. No, no, Kim, there's a gentleman present. Well, that's okay. You tomboys can't fool me, even with your dresses on. Tomboys, on the contrary. We're very classy and sophisticated. Classy and sophisticated, huh? But yes, she's right. We are two young ladies with a mind on. At Tisman School for Girls, they never carry on. Watch us all. This 
fighter Adrian Stone. No snide remarks or any scale. Suggestions, don't it, Face? Don't it, Face? That doesn't even make sense. Oh, and Dwee's brain does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense to me. Does it make sense to you? Definitely. You guys are crazy. Well, thank you, darling. Ta-ta. <laughs> 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 you kids are kooks. Well, of course. What do you expect from donut faces? <laughs> Oh, I guess I had that kind of energy when I was that age, but it sure seems hard to believe. Well, I can't imagine you wild and crazy like your daughters. You mean you can't imagine me as a child? Oh, I see you as a different kind of child, a little more quiet, more reserved. I see you with dolls giving imaginary tea parties, am I right? <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> How'd you get to be so smart? Well, I don't know about smart. Maybe just a good observer. Well, you're more than a good observer with Kelly and Kim. You're a great participant. They really enjoy being with you. The feeling's mutual. They're great kids. And you're a good mother. I've watched you with your kids. I don't know how you're getting so much work done with all this observing. <laughs> Fortunately, I can work and watch at the same time. But the way you folks are with each other, you really seem to enjoy it. And, I don't know, it makes it easy for a stranger like me to fit right in. Well, none of us think of you as a stranger. Anyway, you seem like the kind of guy that would fit in anywhere. I try to fit in everywhere. But the thing is that here, I feel at home. Well, good. The ranch has always been a happy place for me and the girl. Are you one of the R's on the 3R ranch? <laughs> yeah. My mom's name was Ruth. Dad was Ray. Ray, Ruth, and Rachel with three R's. <laughs> Mom died years ago. I was only 12. But Dad died just last year. Mm. Well, that must have been rough on you. Yeah, it was. And on the girls, too. After my husband and I were divorced, Dad asked us to come and live on the ranch with him. He needed us, and we sure needed him. We were really miss him. He was a substitute father for my girls. Well, don't they ever see their own father? No. He's out of our lives completely. Oh, it's just as well. The only experience they had with him was a negative one. Michael was a real charmer. He swept me off my feet, as they say. But I was young and dazzled by him. Kelly was 
born about a year after we were married, and things were still okay, but when Kim came along, it was, it's like something snapped in him. Or maybe it was too much family for him too soon. Or maybe he hadn't had a chance to sow his wild oats, I don't know. Anyway, he started drinking, coming home late, sometimes not at all. And when he was home, he'd do a lot of yelling, taking out on me and the girls. Of course, they were just babies then, but he had a bad effect on me, especially on Kelly. So you left him? No, he left me. He ran off with some woman he was having an affair with. Well, it sounds like you were well rid of him. Mm -hmm. I know, but at the time it hurt a lot. I kept wanting to go back to the time before the trouble began. I guess I was still in love with the man that I thought he was. Well, it's not easy uh, to be left by someone that you love. Is this more observation, or are you speaking from personal experience? <laughs> from the trenches. What happened? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, maybe it's none of my business. Hey, don't apologize. You have every right to ask. Well, you know, I worked with my mother in Texas, and there was this girl, Jenny, who worked there, too. And, uh, well, I guess we fell in love, and things seemed perfect. But she had this terrific talent, and, well, when a record company scout in Nashville offered her a job, well, she just couldn't turn it down, and I really couldn't blame her. Of course, I didn't tell her that at the time. But anyway, she wanted me to wait there for her, or to come with her, and, and I couldn't. And I don't know why. But anyways, I hear she's doing well. She's got a record out, and, and I'm here, quite content. Do you miss her? Not anymore. Well, what's wrong? I'm scared. Of what? Of the way I feel. Well, how do you feel? Uh, alive, happy, excited. And what's wrong with that? Nothing. I like these emotions I feel. I'd like to believe this is real. This may be the time to get in and let it happen. There are no guarantees with romance. At some point I must take a chance. But an old nagging doubt still remains. And I drop <coughs> my
Shorthanded here, and we're pretty much caught up in all the work, and the crew could easily cover for me for a while. How long would you be gone? Two weeks tops. Well, it's been two years since I've seen my mother, Rachel. With the price of a plane ticket, well, I may as well take advantage of it. Will Jenny be there? I think so. Yeah, she's going to be there. But that's not the reason I'm going. I know, but from what you told me a few weeks ago, I think there's some unanswered questions as far as she's concerned. Look, Rachel, for all I know, Jenny's got another guy. I hope she does. I don't want to be with Jenny. I want to be with you. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't go back there just to avoid her. And if seeing her changes the way I feel about you, then, then I ought to know now. You ought to know now. Well, everything's so good with us. What do you write? There are some questions that need answering, and I need to know. Well, please, try to understand, okay? I do understand. Everything you say makes sense, but this doesn't have anything to do with making sense. It has everything to do with me being scared out of my wits. You won't come back. I'll be back. Oh, Dan, you don't know that. Well, I'll be there in a minute, okay? It's all right. You better take care of it before they break it. <coughs> Are you all right? <coughs> sure. I'm okay. Come on. Thank you. 
simple, is it? Just when things seem to be going smooth, complications set in. Well, I don't know about you folks, but I need to stretch my legs. So let's take a little break here, and I'll see you in about 15 minutes to tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> and a little anxious with lots of questions about Nan. Now she knew he'd been working for a young single woman. I guess that made her kind of uneasy. Dan showed up a couple of days after that looking real fit and seemed to be happy to be back with us. It was a hell of a week catching up on each other's lives and making party plans. But mostly there was just lots of happiness and excitement. <laughs> Where to be wearing these outfits again? There are party costumes this time. It almost seems like I never even left. I know. Rosie's never changes. Just people do. Have you changed? Well, I'm a rancher now. Ooh, a rancher. <laughs> so are you happy there on the ranch? Happy? Well, yeah, I guess so. Kept real busy and I seem to have taken pretty well to the work. So tell me about Rachel. What do you want to know? She's a nice lady with two terrific kids. Come on, Dan, you know what I'm asking. Is she more than just your boss? A few weeks before I left to come here, uh, she and I started going out together. Is that serious? I don't know. It's all so new. Well, I'm sure you've had your share of involvements the past few years. There's been no one, Dan. Oh, a few dates. Nothing special. Certainly nothing serious. Mostly just a lot of hard work. That's going real well for you, I hear. Yeah, it is. <coughs> but, you know... Well... Two years ago, I asked for some time to work on my career to see if I could make it. And I know now that I probably can. But it's funny. I'd give it all up just to be back with you again. Just to have things the way they used to be. Our year together was the most wonderful year of our life. I've missed you, Dad. <laughs> Well, I've missed you too, Jenny. Well, what do you think? Are we ready? Well, yeah. I, I think we're pretty much ready here. Well, come on. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Good. <laughs> so, the big night was finally here. The place began filling up early. All the regulars were there, of course. Now, Rosie's was always a happy place for people. But that night, it was really something. Not just because of the occasion, but because Rosie herself was so special to people. And also, we were all uh, glad to see Jenny and Dan back with us. Anyway, we were all ready to celebrate. <laughs> was an 80s man, I didn't even try, I partial to a long neck through, I never learned to cry, but all that changed the day we met, now I'm getting shed a tear, and since you're gone, I sit here alone, just sucking up of your
guys aren't tired, are you? <laughs> you use that barrel of beer now, Johnny. <laughs> well, it's been a long time since we've heard from our dynamic duo. Now, if they're not too out of breath, let's call Jenny and Dan. Come on.
young lady, huh? Yeah. Well, now we're going to hear from somebody who's not getting any better. Charlie! What have you got for us tonight, Charlie? Well, it just so happens a friend of mine visited me a couple of weeks ago, and he sat down and told me a story that was so incredible and so inspiring and so very weird. <laughs> then I wrote me a song about it. And it's in his own words, and it's a true story. <laughs> we were as normal as family can be. Uh, me and the wife and daughter, Emily, we had a cat and a dog and a no-account parakeet. I got me a job in a different town. Well, we needed a house, so we shot around. We bought real cheap next door to a power plant. Nuclear, that is. The realtor said it was safe, you see, and a government man said, well, I agree. Well, my own dear mother lives right down the street. Well, she does. One long we began to change the animals, started acting strange, and Emily grew a foot to about three weeks. <laughs> no matter what the experts say, it started to happen on the day that we moved next door to that crazy power plant. Oh, yeah. Tomcat now barks like a beagle, the dog grew wings and flies like an eagle, the parakeet just sits around and chants. Oh yeah! My wife and I both glow in the dark, our nine-foot daughter thinks it's a lark, since we move next door to that nuclear power plant. Here we go! Just when things were looking grand, well, the offers started coming in, the reporters began calling night and day. Oh yeah! Agent man said, sign with me, I'll have you starring on TV. Soon he booked us on the Geraldo show. <laughs> me and the wife stood all aglow with our nine-foot daughter, stole the show, putting our weird pets through their faces. There they go. Bill Tom Cat Whaley marked on cue and the dog took off and a way flew. Whatever he thought Geraldo had a chance. <laughs> The old tomcat now barks like a beagle The dog grew wings and flies like an eagle The parakeet just sits around and chants All the things he says The wife and I both glow in the dark Her nine-foot daughter thinks it's a lark Since we moved next door to that nuclear power plant The finale! Three years later, me and the spouse Well, we're both still shining like a light now But otherwise, we're as healthy as can be <laughs> Well, showing off and barking up the store. Ruff, ruff. The dog's become a movie star. Our agent said that he'd go far. Last year won an Academy Award. True. Well, the parakeet around off the list is now a TV evangelist. And even cry just like Jimmy Swagger's last meeting. We all find the spot our fears and our money's coming out of our ears since we moved next door to that. Do a song, don't you think? Yeah.
for Rosie's place, which had its share of great parties. No one wanted to leave, and it wasn't until the wee hours of the morning that things started breaking up. Maybe because Jenny and Dan were still with us, getting on well, looking great together. You know, I just couldn't help feeling sorry for that little gal back in Oregon. And Rosie and I just watched and wondered. It's hard to figure what the outcome was going to be. Then one day Rosie and Jenny went on a shopping spree and Dan and I were working around the bar. I sensed a change in his mood. He seemed preoccupied, like a man with a lot on his mind. And then later on, <coughs> well, the gals came back. <laughs> hey, what took you so damn long? Oh, honey, I've been out shopping with my number one best shopping partner. <laughs> What'd you do, buy out all the West Texas? Honey, all of Dallas and Fort Worth, too. <laughs> Here, let me help you with those. My, my, ain't you the country dude? Oh, Daddy, honey, I got you something real special. Oh, honey, don't worry. Jenny picked it out. Rosie, come on. We got stuff to do. Well, get along, little doggy. <laughs> How much money did you spend anyway, girl? Honey, I spent all of yours and maybe some of mine. <laughs> honey, wait till you see what I bought you. It glows in the dark. <laughs> Jen. What's the matter? Well, sit down. I need to talk to you. This is something bad. Tell me quickly. I'm going back, Jenny, to Oregon. I made a reservation for tomorrow morning. And that's it? <laughs> You're so sure you couldn't even talk about it with me first? Don't say that. There's nothing foolish about you. And you've been open and honest with me, and you must know how strongly I still feel about you. But I didn't think seeing you again would confuse me so much. Well, I made a whole new life for myself out there, and then I'm back here feeling as if I don't even want to leave again. Don't, Dan. Please. Give us a chance. Give us more than just a few weeks. Please, Dan, don't make me pay. Jenny, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my whole life. Well, you're a beautiful, wonderful girl who should never have to beg anyone for anything. If only I hadn't accepted that offer. If only it was never made. We weren't ready then, Jenny. You would have always had your own fulfilled dreams, and, and I really wasn't ready for marriage. You did exactly what you should have done. You did what was right for you. And it wasn't too much for you to ask me to come with you or, or even to wait for you. It was me, Jenny. I was the problem. Well, sure. Part of my refusal was pride, male ego, whatever you want to call it. But if that was all, well, I would have swallowed it up and come right after you. In fact, I came this close to coming after you. But, but something told me that, that even though you knew what you wanted in life, well, I didn't, and I had to know. And that's why I started working all those jobs and traveling around as much. And at first, the Oregon job just seemed like another stepping stone. But it turned out to be the answer. It's the life I want. 
and yet I still had to make sure about us, and, and like I said, the way I feel for you is still so strong. But for the last couple of days, I've just been, I've just been wanting to be back there. And once I made the final decision to go back, well, I knew it was right for me, Jen. It's where I should be, Jenny. Rachel. Yes. And in that life, it's me. I guess there's nothing more for me to say. I'm so sure. Well, I had to be before I talked to you. It's better this way. Does Rosie know? Oh, no. Well, I'll tell her in a minute. <clears throat> Damn, the thought of you being with any other woman. Part of me is going to be jealous of any man in your life. You and I both know there's going to be someone else for you. I'm not so sure about that. Well, I am. Oh, Jim. I'm sorry.
there, Danny. It's going to be okay. How can it be, Rosie? I've lost him. I can't believe it. These past two weeks have been so good. I thought he still loved me. I think he still does, honey. But he loves her more. I can't believe it's over. He's the only man I'll ever want. Oh, shh. There, there, honey. I know that's the way you feel right now. And of course you should, but your life has been more than just Dan. It's hard to realize it when, when you're right in the middle of it all. But things have a way of working out for the best. Trust me. You know, Rosie, it hurts so much. I know, honey. I don't know. Curtains out of dealing with a broken heart. Curtains part of healing when he's gone away. Life don't always go the way you plan it. That's why you've got to take it day by day. It ain't fun to stay at home. It ain't fun to be alone. It ain't fun to sit and cry your nights away. It ain't fun to hear his name. It ain't fun to feel the pain. But sitting here won't bring him back up. stayed on with us for a few days more. Now we weren't able to cheer her up completely, but we did get a smile or two out of her before she returned to Nashville. Of course, the, the news from Oregon was as upbeat as you'd expect. And then about six months after Dan went back, we got a wedding invitation. So we took ourselves a little vacation and drove up to Oregon. It was easy to see why Dan had fallen in love with his life there. Rachel and the girls were beautiful people in every sense of the word. And that ranch, well, it was the kind of place that postcards are made of. The wedding was one long party with plenty of good country music, and like Dan, we soon fell in love with the place and its people. We left reluctantly after two weeks with lots of teary goodbyes, and 
and a promise that they would soon visit us in Texas. The girls, the girls were even planning what songs they were going to sing at Rosie's place. <laughs> As for Jenny, well, she was just too tough not to land on her feet. Her letters soon started sounding even more cheerful and optimistic, and her most recent one said that she was getting ready to cut another album, and she was real excited about that. As for Rosie and me, well, life goes on like always around here. The place is busy as usual with their regulars. There's always new folks dropping by. Lots of old and new personalities to be curious, worried, or amused by. Now maybe you can see why I love working here so much. It's like having a ringside seat to an ongoing drama. Old stories end and new ones begin. Nope, there's never a dull moment at Rosie's place. We'd like to thank you folks for stopping by to share this evening's fun. We hope you come back soon to hear some brand new tunes and tell your friends to come. We hope we made you smile for a little while you've had a change of pace because there's no place else on earth like Rosie's place. Good night, y'all.